learn about cracking the male-dominated ranks of Hollywood. Meet a pioneer coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Wordsmith on Oak Street in Myrtle Beach. We're focused on the 13th annual South Carolina Writers Workshop Writing Conference, which was held last month at the Ocean Creek Resort. And we're visiting with Mary Eady, the president of the Wordsmith. Good morning, Mary, and happy Good morning, Thanksgiving. Greg. Happy Thanksgiving to you. How about it? It's a great day. What an exciting day to think. Rain or shine, we still made it to Thanksgiving, and it's been such an amazing 2003. And it's a great relaxing time to enjoy food and family and to talk about great writing in South Carolina. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for hosting us all week here at the Wordsmith. It was amazing to have gotten the writers who were with us here in Myrtle Beach five weeks ago for the 13th annual conference. We have so many writers across South Carolina who are writing for enjoyment, writing for publication, writing for movie production, and we want to encourage everyone who's interested in writing to cultivate that talent. Yes, Mary. Share with the viewers real quick about the novel you've written and, and what inspired the story. Greg, I've just completed my first romantic suspense novel that my agent in New York is trying now to sell. And it's based upon, loosely upon, experiences I had in politics over the past 25 years in running campaigns. I stopped running campaigns about eight years ago, but I still have this library of experience in my head. And so what we, I tried to do was just to push some ideas out a little further and to make more things up. You know, in fiction, a writer gets paid for lies. A journalist doesn't get paid for lies, but, <laughs> but a fiction writer gets paid for the most outrageous lies. And so you make them all up and you put them out there for readers to enjoy. Yes, Mary, how exciting. It is exciting. That should get anyone excited. I'm sure that uh, hearing, hearing you talk last month at the conference probably got a heck of a lot of folks excited. I just love being around other writers and I get so much from them and these writers um, Kathy Fagnanetta we're so lucky to have her she um, has written books herself but she also has a soft spot in her heart for writers and relates to writers and indeed is an ad hoc advisor to the South Carolina Writers Workshop yes. even though she's out in Pasadena California mm -hmm. Mary how is being a member of literary groups help you craft this first novel Literary groups provide a wonderful forum for exchanging chapters and concepts and talking with one another so that you can get the right aspect of a character down on the paper or that you can uh, fulfill your story somehow. And really, writing is a very isolated experience. When you do that by yourself, day in, day out, you want to talk with someone else who's having similar experiences. Mm -hmm. So it's therapeutic in that way. Have you been able to share your experiences in the publishing process with some of your fellow writers? I have, and they've been very encouraging to me. The more experienced writers who have published a number of novels or who've produced movies can then talk with me and encourage me, and I really have enjoyed that process, and encourage other writers to find people who are more successful than they are to help mentor them in that process. And Mary, what about some of the programs offered through the South Carolina Writers Workshop that have helped you develop this that first manuscript? That's exactly what the South Carolina Writers Workshop is designed to do, to help put new writers with more experienced writers so that they can develop their talent and reach publication or production. Mm -hmm. Obviously, our, our next guest was the keynote speaker at the South Carolina Writers Workshop held at Ocean Creek Resort last month. What can you tell us about Kathy Fong Yonetta? Kathy is a very charismatic person who has had a very extensive career in the movie industry, working with a number of studios and helped us tremendously to bring her talent to South Carolina so that others can uh, learn more about the movie industry. And Mary, you said she's an advisor to the South Carolina Writers Workshop. She's an ad hoc advisor. We call upon her, and she's helped us raise money, and she's helped us develop our program. She brought a number of writers with her, uh, including Pam Wallace, and we'll be talking with Pam sometime this week as well. Learn about this ama amazing advisor, Kathy Young Fangionetta, coming up next on Carolina People. <music> Thank you. 
Good morning. Welcome back to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Wordsmith in Myrtle Beach. We're focused on the 13th annual South Carolina Writers Workshop Writing Conference, which was held at Ocean Creek Resort last month. And we're visiting with Kathy Fognonetta, an author, screenwriter, and instructor. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning. Thanksgiving to you. Happy Thanksgiving. What an incredible day to think we've made uh, so much stride this year. 2003 has been such a big year. Mm -hmm. And to have gotten you here in, in the greater Myrtle Beach area last month was amazing. Oh, well, it was my pleasure to be here. I love coming to South Carolina. <laughs> Mary said you're an ad hoc advisor to the South Carolina Writers Workshop. How did that come about? Um, I was here last year as a presenter, and um, I was just amazed at the amount of talent that is here, the amount of enthousi enthusiasm, um, and the, how organized the group is. Uh, it's pro I do a lot of these workshops every year, and truly, this is probably one of the most well-organized, well-thought-out, and well-balanced uh, conferences that I've ever been to. So uh, I started talking to them and they would ask questions about, you know, well, you know, we do have some people who are really interested in screenwriting and do you know uh, of an author who maybe has made the transition to becoming a, a screenwriter? And so with these questions, uh, we were able to kind of help shape this year's uh, conference. Great, absolutely. It was so exciting hearing you talk about when you all were flying out, flying into Atlanta, and then driving to Columbia, spending the night there before coming down to Myrtle Beach, and really getting a feel of, the, of why so many folks love the Palmetto State. Oh, well, South Carolina, I mean, it's God's country. I'm driving through there, and I'm just thinking, wow, this is really lovely stuff. <laughs> That's wonderful, Kathy. Tell us about your first years in Hollywood, and describe the changes you've seen in the movie industry during your career. Whoa, okay. I won't say exactly how many years ago I started, but I've been in the business over 25 years. And my very first job in the industry actually was doing things like being, uh, being an extra and doing bit parts, uh, saying little one-liners, and I quickly got very bored with that. Um, my first husband, and uh, you know, he's, you know, we, we've been divorced now for a number of years, but the only thing I can give him credit for is he was in the industry and he got me interested in, in really being an active part of it and he said well gosh you know you're you're a good typist why don't you try out for a position in the studio in the typing pool at least sort of get your feet wet that way mm -hmm. uh, so I got a job over at Universal in their typing pool in the lit department and I found out a week later uh, someone told me the only reason I was hired uh, was because I was Asian and they had to do a, a minority quota mm. and so I became the first Asian woman ever hired full-time at Universal Studios is that right? Yeah, it was at a time when uh, the government was getting ready to sue the studios because one tenth, less than one tenth of one percent of the people who are employed in the industry were minorities. Less than one tenth of one percent. Yeah. Mm. That that's a, that's surely an issue worthy of uh, potentially of a law. I mean, of the government getting involved. Uh. I think that's why they were threatening. They didn't they didn't come down to do it. I think they all started. Um, Realizing that, well, I guess we better start hiring some people. Now, luckily, I am a good. T I was a good typist. I think I still am. And um, you know, it got me. It did get me the job. Uh, it was. It was not unusual though for me to walk around the lot for a week and not see another person of color. Wow. Yeah. Mm. But um, those years are, you know, behind us. I do think a lot of strides have been made. Um, I certainly do feel that that uh, nowadays that that uh, women not only have a better chance, but minorities certainly do. Uh, when I was, you know, in the industry first starting out, there were no film schools. And so we didn't have, you know, really the, the uh, educational opportunities that there are now. Almost every single state in the union now has uh, at least one major university that has, um, where you can get a, a degree in film. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kathy, share with the viewers a little bit, about, if you can give kind of a play-by-play -play of some of the most exhilarating experiences you felt in the industry over, I know we didn't want to date it, but over the last 25 years. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, I, I think still the most exciting thing for me to, is when I actually read a script. And I just get this feeling in my gut <laughs> that it's going to be a movie. Uh. It doesn't happen a lot. Uh, but sometimes it does, and I just, it really is a wonderful feeling for me. Oh, yeah. Then it's a long wait, though, because <laughs> right. it usually right. takes two years before something comes to the screen. Mm -hmm. But uh, for me, who, who gets to read, I'm the first one who usually gets to read it, and then it goes mm -hmm. up to the bosses, and, you know, it goes up to uh, whether it's greenlit or not, then they get the stars and the directors and everybody attached. Uh, it takes a while. 
but yeah, it's worth it. Is that is that frustrating or baffling, Kathy, when you know that this could, this has incredible potential, but that it could be two years before anything's uh, before it'll really hit the the big screen? Um, I've I've learned to to temper my patience, <laughs> but yeah, it can be very frustrating, and it's even more frustrating is when they take something that I thought was a good project and it's made into a movie that isn't as good as I had hoped it would be. Right, yeah. right. I'm glad you mentioned a little bit about the, the progression for women in the industry and truly minorities in the industry. When you think about, if, was there ever, was it that intention possibly the government getting involved 25 years ago that really prompted the activity of, of the entrance of more women, or do you think we're just seeing folks like yourself on the lot and opening the doors of possibly for women to get into the business? Well, I came in at a very interesting um, peak in the industry in which they realized they had to make changes. Mm -hmm. Those changes have been slow in coming. It's only really been in the last 10-15 years that you have started to see more minorities, more women in the industry, and especially in, in areas that really count. Mm -hmm. um, probably the woman that most people are more, most familiar with is Sherry Lansing, and she also started mm -hmm. on the other side of the camera as an actress and right. gradually worked her way up through the studio ranks and has been the head of Paramount, which is where I'm currently um, employed mm -hmm. uh, and she she now heads up the motion picture group and has been for I guess maybe 15 years at least mm -hmm. and that's quite um, that that's a long um, that's a long stay in, in yeah. the industry in one business in one position Sherry's definitely been somebody who is who has led um, led that that entrance were there people in particular that had open minds that enabled the opinions to begin changing 10 to 15 years ago well, on a personal level, I, I, I can talk about my own personal yeah, experience, please. and that is um, I was working for the VP of production at Warner Brothers. His name is Richard Shepard. And you know how it goes. Uh, every once in a while, they have a reshuffling of the, mm -hmm. of the executives, mm -hmm. and he became a producer. And I really enjoyed working with him. Um, he really taught me a lot about the, about the business, how things work, uh, and I... He was very patient in listening to my questions. He wasn't afraid to sit down and talk to me about it, mm. which was sort of a first because a lot of people kind of keep it close to the vest. And he taught me he taught me that one of the first things you have to do is you know ask the right questions and make the right decisions. And so what he did was uh, he said, well, you know, I'm going to be a producer. Do you think you might be interested in becoming a production assistant and working for me? And I said, of course, I'd be happy to. And uh, he was on location, and scripts kept piling up, and I had nothing to do, so I started reading the scripts. When he came back from the location, started going through the scripts, I started talking to him about, well, I don't know, you don't really need to read that one. It's not very good. And he would ask me questions about it. He finally realized I had gone through the whole pile of, like, 30-something scripts, and he said, well, can you do a little paragraph on each one about what it's about, and whether you liked it or not, and why, why or why not we should do this movie? And I became hooked. I mean, I knew I had found my destiny, so wow, to speak. Yeah. And he was kind enough that he eventually became the head of production at MGM. Mm -hmm. Wanted me to go with him. I was, like I said, hooked by then. And I just said, you know, I'd really like to continue working with you, but I really love the work that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, as your assistant, that I'll be able to continue doing that kind of work. So we struck a deal. He said, okay, if you come and hire and train the person that's going to take your place, I will um, allow you to work 30 days in the MGM story department as a story analyst or a reader. Mm. And uh, after that, it's up to you. I've, uh, I am happy to open the door, but it's up to you to stay inside. Mm. So um, I spent my 30 days doing, doing reading. I then had to go through a series of tests and interviews and, and discussions with other members of the union before I was accepted into the Story Analyst Guild. Mm. Um, that's basically how I got my start in, in the industry. How exciting. Yeah, it was. It was very exciting. That is wonderful, Candy. Obviously, your presentation last month to the South Carolina Writers Workshop centered upon selling scripts to Hollywood. What's the most important move a writer, a new writer, could make towards reaching the goal of selling a script? Well. I think a lot of people are intimidated by the fact that, you know, Hollywood, they, they, they think of it as this huge sign on the side of a hill, and how do you reach that? Um, 
if you, especially if you're living in South Carolina or yeah, Iowa sure. or wherever you might be, uh, a lot of people are intimidated by that. Mm -hmm. But with the advent of the internet and email, there's so many ways that people can actually get information, uh, that they can actually get in contact with people. You can't get in contact with a lot of the people who are in the studios, the production companies, and right. the agencies. But there are a lot of consultants now, um, people who take, uh, take go to conferences, attend the conferences. That's another way where you can directly meet people. Um, I, had the, I have, over the last two years that I've been with, with South Carolina Writers, I've been able to meet probably about almost 150 writers who are interested either in directly writing a screenplay or turning their novel into a screenplay. And let's not forget it, Academy Award time. Uh, probably more than half of those movies that we see up there being nominated for Best Picture came from a novel. Mm, that's a very good point. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a very good point. So a writer does not have to be in Hollywood to get her or his script reviewed. I think it's important to be in Hollywood if you are in television, mm -hmm. especially television series. Yes. Then you'll have to be there on the set a lot. Mm -hmm. Summarize a little bit for the viewers. I know it's difficult to, to encapsulate your, your entire presentation at the conference, but if you could give the viewers a sense of what actually happened on the, the weekend you spent at Ocean Creek Resort. Oh, wow. Um, it was an amazing weekend. I met so many wonderful, talented people. Uh, there, what this conference provides are critique sessions. And I was very fortunate to meet with four or five wonderful writers who were very good about uh, sending in their first 10, 20 pages of their projects to me so that I could get a chance to read and evaluate it, get a sense of their writing style. Uh, and then sat down for 15 minutes each with them and, and talked about their projects. Uh, they were a wonderful group of very intelligent writers. Um, a couple of them were, had scripts, a couple of them had manuscripts. Uh, it's, it's a little tough sometimes to try and tell them exactly everything that they, that they need to know. Uh, I think a lot of them are, of course, going to hopefully end up buying my book. And, mm -hmm. you know, if that happens, I think they'll get a lot of the other information in there. Because I, I put everything that I could about this crazy business in there. Yes, please, and I'm glad you mentioned your book. You've got it there in your lap. Can yeah. you hold it up and uh, show it to the viewers? Let's see, the uh, the script selling game, a Hollywood insider's look at getting your script sold and produced. Mm -hmm. What a great cover. Oh, I love my cover. You guys can see it. There's the Hollywood sign down here with the uh, paper airplane made out of the script page. I love sailing it. Sailing over it. Great thinking, Kathy. <laughs> now, if, if viewers interested in getting in touch with you, could they go online or uh, would they just... Uh -huh, I have a website. Right. Mm -hmm. What is that? It's www.kathyfongyoneta.com. And it's Kathy, K-A-T-H-I-E, right. Fong, F-O-N-G, Yoneta, Y-O-N-E-D-A, dot com. Fantastic. <laughs> now, is that common that folks will... Uh, I, uh, Gwen uh, Hunter was with us earlier in the week, I think on Tuesday, mm -hmm. GwenHunter.com, and, and f it's, it's surely a great vehicle. Did, was there ever, um, no one had snagged your, uh, that web they address? They hadn't snagged uh, my name. Right. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> no, they hadn't snagged my name. Actually, I owe somebody at, Sa at South Carolina Writers Workshop um, the fact that they got me my web designer. And that's because I made friends with, with an author there, Sandra Johnson, who wrote mm -hmm. Standing on Holy Ground. And uh, I loved her website. And it turned out her sister, who is a corporate um, designer, was the one who had done her website. And so she did mine. And I, you know, I must say, it's, uh, I've, I've gotten a lot of people uh, who've been emailing me and talking to me and asking questions and getting more information. And gosh, workshops have been, you know, workshop opportunities have been popping up all over, book signing opportunities, all because of the website. And book signing opportunities are very important, Kathy. They are. They are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you could turn back the clock and change any one step in your career, what do you think it would be and why? I know that's a tough question, but when oh. you think of uh, <laughs> change in your life, uh, anything that you would possibly have done differently? You know, I don't, I don't think I would. I, I, I must uh -huh. say right. that even when I made mistakes, I learned mm -hmm. from those mistakes, mm -hmm. and they really helped to that's make me um, uh, get on a, on a straighter path. Uh, it really helped me to realize the direction I was in. And so I don't think I would really say that I would regret it anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There, are, there are times when, you know, when I get frustrated with the industry, I think like all of us, uh, there's a love-hate relationship that we have mm -hmm. with our careers, but it's in my blood now. I can't get rid of it. Yes, very definitely. we got about five minutes, Kathy. What's the best 
career decision you think you've made? Um, well, it's kind of an unusual one because a lot of people thought I was taking a step back. Uh, about 11 years ago, I left the executive ranks. Uh, up to that point, I had been a creative executive and a vice president, and you know, people were saying, "Well, gosh, you know, you're on your way up." Uh, but it just got to the point where I felt I was losing touch with what really mattered in my life. So I did take a step back. I decided to, you know, I really wanted to work more with writers, to more directly with writers. Mm -hmm. uh, the further up you get in Hollywood, the more things become administrative, social, and political. Mm -hmm. And uh, those were not the things that I particularly enjoyed, and I didn't feel that my strengths were necessarily lying in, the, in those areas. Mm -hmm. um, so I decided to go back to doing story analysis, and um, Paramount hired me as a story analyst and development specialist, which was great because it combined the two skills that I think I really excel in. And I then started doing a lot of workshops and being able to meet and work directly and consult directly with writers. It was wonderful. It was to me, um, it was like another door had opened for me. And, and in fact, shortly after that I was asked to write a column and the column is really how this book got started. The script selling game. Mm -hmm. This isn't your first book. Actually, it is my first book. I've written a column, the right. column that I wrote, I wrote for four years. Uh -huh. And people would come up to me at conferences with these tattered oh, little, yeah. little columns and saying, couldn't you at least put it in a book? <laughs> <laughs> so that really, it, 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 was, uh, it was all those writers out there at the conferences that really motivated me to finally get off my duff and write the book. That is wonderful, Kennedy. Yeah. Great inspiration. That's great inspiration. Speaking of inspiration, do you have any stars that you admire and, and, and why? Um, well, by stars, do you mean like, like actors or actresses? Yeah, how about actors and actresses? Well, there are two stars that I'll, I'll talk about, the two stars that are fairly well known, mm -hmm. Paul Newman mm -hmm. and Tom Cruise. And they were working on Color of Money, which is one of the first projects that I worked on when I was at Disney as an executive. Mm -hmm. I was so impressed with the fact that um, Paul Newman really did take the time to... Um, to talk with, with Tom Cruise. Tom actually was smart enough to go over there and, and ask him questions on, okay, in this next scene, um, how would you like me to play? Should I, do, should I be more serious? Should I be more um, irritated? You know, it was wonderful to see the give and take between the two of them. I think Tom Cruise recognized this was his first big dramatic role uh, in which he really was was um, doing something that wasn't as lighthearted as say, as, say, risky business or something. But I was very impressed with the fact that he knew enough to ask the questions and was very respectful of Paul Newman, that Paul Newman was warm and open enough to want to help him and to, you know, give him advice when asked. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Candy, what personal qualities do you think most re readily contributed to your success? Oh, my husband would probably say, because I'm stubborn. <laughs> um, I have learned, I think, to, that it's important to hang in there. Uh, I also think it's important to have balance in, in, in your life, and that's exactly what I think I have. I am very fortunate to be married to the same man now for almost 30 years, and uh, I do think that that helps me to remain balanced in my life. Uh, I also think that it's in, important to um, believe in what you're doing and to just grab it with all the passion that you can. Those are special words. Those are special words. What do you think you'd tell someone? And of course, that helps encapsulate your presentation last month. But if you were going to tell someone trying to break into Hollywood, a one-minute plot summary into the script selling game. <laughs> I know that's tough. And of course, Mary Eady said it's Thanksgiving. Greg, don't be too hard on her. But uh, <laughs> if there was something, somebody, as you said, it's. And I, I'm, I'm glad on the cover of your book, the the big shot up front at the top is the is the plane of the script mm -hmm. and in a long distance a long way out is the little Hollywood on the hill but what is it what, what would you really encourage somebody to look for well first of all Hollywood is made up of human beings sometimes they're a little further away but that doesn't mean that they are totally unattainable mm -hmm. uh, I think if you if you get the knowledge if you go to the conferences if you, if you belong to a writers group all of those things help tremendously. They did a study at one of the um, uh, uh, New England uh, universities, and it proved that those writers who participated in writing groups on a regular basis 
actually had a higher percentage of success in attaining their goals. So I do think that certainly South Carolina Writers Workshop is one of those things that really helps towards that end. Uh, I also think that you also have to be, in, 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 you know, it's in line with Thanksgiving, you have to be thankful uh, for the support that you get from your writers group, from your family, from the people who believe in you. Uh, once that, that you know that people believe in you, you can start believing in yourself, and I think almost anything is attainable after that. You heard her say it, and so much of that's related to a hint she got early on, a hint that makes her and Tom Cruise a heck of a lot alike. She learned early on to ask the right questions, ask the right questions, make that effort, and of course Tom Cruise, as she laid out, made that effort with Paul Newman. Take the time to ask the right questions. Kathy Ponyaneda, thanks so much for being with us this Pleasure. morning. Absolutely. <laughs> Stay tuned to more Carolina people coming up next. Thank Mary Edie of the Wordsmith and Kathy Fognonetta with the script selling game for making today's Carolina people so special. Check out KathyFognonetta.com, learn a little more. Happy Thanksgiving.